वेलकम बैक ना इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी लुक्ड एट डिविडेंड्स विच इज अ वे फॉर कंपनीज टू शेयर अ पोर्शन ऑफ देयर प्रॉफिट्स विद देयर शेयर होल्डर्स नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट डेट्स एसोसिएटेड विद डिविडेंड्स नाउ वी लिस्ट द इम्पॉर्टेंट डेट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिविडेंड्स वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट डे इज द डिविडेंड डिक्लेरेशन डे This is essentially the day on which the board of directors announce that the company is going to pay a dividend. They also announce the quantum of the dividend and also the record date for the dividend, which brings us to our next important date associated with dividend. Now record date is the date on which the company looks at the share holding records to determine the shareholder who will be receiving the dividend. The investor's name must be on the records on this date so that he can receive the dividend. In order to ensure that his name is on the records, the investor may need to be holding the shares two or three days before the record date. Now, whether he should be holding the shares two days before the record date or three days before the record date depends on the settlement cycle in the country in which the stock is listed. Also, we'll like to mention that while we have defined the record date with respect to the dividends, record dates are actually applicable to all corporate actions. So, for example, if there is a bonus issue, again there is a record date associated with the bonus issue, which is used to determine which investors are eligible to receive the benefit due to the bonus issue. So, record date is not just applicable to dividends, but it is associated with almost all corporate actions. The next important date associated with dividends is the date of actual payment of dividend. So this is essentially the date by which the company intends to pay out the dividend to those shareholders who are eligible to receive the dividend. Now the company declares this date and this date may be a week or more after the date of record so that the company has sufficient time to accurately pay dividend to all those entitled to receive dividend. Now let's look at an example to understand all these terminologies a bit better. So now let's look at an example with respect to dividends. Now in this table you see that the ex dividend date is the 15th. So anyone buying the stock on 15th would actually not be eligible for receiving dividends. Hence in order to receive the dividend one needs to be the owner of the stock on 14th. So if the ex dividend date is 15th and you happen to buy the stock on 15th you won't be receiving the dividend but instead the person who sold you the stock would be receiving the dividend now if the exchange follows a t plus 2 settlement this would mean that the transaction would be settled in 2 days and the records will be updated in 2 days in such a scenario the record date would be one day after the ex dividend date as this way anyone buying the stock one day before the ex dividend date will be the shareholder as per the records on the record date On the other hand if the exchange follows a T plus 3 settlement cycle then the record date would be on 17th which would be the second day after the ex dividend date and again this is so because anyone buying the stock one day before the ex dividend date will be the shareholder as per the records on the record date only if the record date is kept two days after the ex dividend date with this we have covered all the important dates associated with dividends